Welcome to another TOEFL listening practice video. In this video, you will listen to a lecture, answer some questions about it, review the correct answers and explanations. Channel members can download their worksheets in the community tab of the channel. Don't forget to subscribe for more TOEFL listening practice. Good morning, everyone. Uh, today, we're going to dive into a fascinating field, one that impacts our daily lives in ways we often don't even consciously perceive. We're going to talk about acoustics, specifically focusing on the science of sound propagation. So what exactly is acoustics? Well, broadly speaking, acoustics is the branch of physics that deals with the study of sound, including its production, control, transmission, reception, and effects. It's a huge field, right? From the design of concert halls to medical ultrasound, even to how animals communicate, acoustics is at play. But for our purposes today, we'll hone in on the fundamental aspect, how sound moves from one point to another. Let's start with the very basics. What is sound? At its core, sound is a form of energy that travels as a wave. It's created by vibrations. Think about it. When you speak, your vocal cords vibrate. When you pluck a guitar string, it vibrates. When a drum is hit, its membrane vibrates. These vibrations cause the particles in the surrounding medium, usually air, but it could be water or a solid, to also vibrate. And these vibrations uh, propagate. They transfer energy from one particle to the next, creating what we perceive as sound. Now, it's crucial to understand that sound is a mechanical wave. This means it requires a medium to travel through. Unlike light, which is an electromagnetic wave and can travel through the vacuum of space, sound cannot. If you were in space and yelled, no one would hear you, because there's virtually no medium for the vibrations to transmit through. This is a fundamental concept. So how do these vibrations travel? Sound waves are primarily longitudinal waves. Imagine a slinky toy. If you push one end, you create a compression, a region where the coils are bunched together, and then a rarefaction, a region where they're stretched apart. This pattern of compressions and rarefactions moves along the slinky. That's precisely what happens with sound waves in air. The vibrating source pushes air particles together, compression, and then pulls them apart, rarefaction, and this pressure variation travels through the air. The particles themselves don't travel a great distance. They simply oscillate back and forth around their equilibrium positions, passing the energy along. Let's quickly define a couple of key characteristics of these waves because they dictate what we hear. First, we have frequency. Frequency is the number of complete oscillations or cycles a wave makes per second. We measure it in hertz, hz. A higher frequency means more oscillations per second, and we perceive this as a higher pitch. So a piccolo playing a high note has a much higher frequency sound wave than a tuba playing a low note, right? Then there's amplitude. Amplitude refers to the maximum displacement or distance moved by a point on a vibrating body or wave measured from its equilibrium position. In sound waves, amplitude relates to the intensity or loudness of the sound. A larger amplitude wave means more energy is being carried and we perceive it as a louder sound. If you gently pluck a guitar string, it produces a small amplitude wave. If you pluck it hard, you get a larger amplitude wave and therefore a louder sound. Okay, so we've established what sound is and its basic properties. Now let's move to how it propagates and more specifically, what influences its speed and behavior? The speed of sound isn't constant. It varies significantly depending on the medium through which it's traveling and the conditions of that medium. Generally speaking, sound travels fastest through solids, slower through liquids, and slowest through gases. Why do you think that is? Well, think about the particles. In solids, particles are packed very closely together and are rigidly connected, allowing vibrations to be transmitted very efficiently from one particle to the next. In liquids, they're closer than in gases, but can move more freely. In gases, particles are far apart and collide less frequently, making transmission less efficient. 
This is why you might hear a train approaching by putting your ear to the tracks long before you hear it through the air. Within a given medium, other factors play a role. For example, in gases like air, temperature has a significant impact. As temperature increases, the particles in the gas move faster and collide more frequently, which speeds up the rate at which compressions and rarefactions are transmitted. So, sound travels faster on a hot day than on a cold day. Also, the density of the medium matters. Denser mediums generally transmit sound faster if their elasticity is also high. But this can get a bit complex, so for now, remember, temperature is a primary factor for gases. Beyond simply traveling in a straight line, sound waves interact with their environment in several fascinating ways. One of the most common is reflection. This is when a sound wave bounces off a surface. Think of an echo, that's sound reflection. The nature of the surface dramatically affects the reflection. Hard, smooth surfaces like concrete or glass reflect sound very well, while soft, Porous materials like curtains or acoustic foam tend to absorb sound, reducing the reflections and dampening echoes. This is fundamental to architectural acoustics, you know, designing spaces where sound quality is important, like recording studios or lecture halls. We want to control echoes, not eliminate them entirely, usually. Another phenomenon is refraction. This occurs when sound waves bend as they pass from one medium into another or even when they pass through a medium where conditions like temperature or density change. For example, sound can bend upwards or downwards over long distances depending on temperature gradients in the air. On a cool night, sound can travel much further because the air near the ground is cooler and denser than the air higher up, causing sound waves to refract downwards towards the ground. Finally, there's diffraction. Diffraction is the bending of sound waves around obstacles or through openings. This is why you can hear someone talking from another room even if you can't see them. The sound waves are bending around the doorway. The extent of diffraction depends on the wavelength of the sound wave relative to the size of the obstacle or opening. Lower frequency sounds, longer wavelengths, diffract more easily than higher frequency sounds, shorter wavelengths. This is why bass notes from a distant party seem to wrap around corners more than treble notes. So, to summarize, sound is a mechanical wave created by vibrations, requiring a medium for propagation. Its properties like pitch and loudness are determined by frequency and amplitude, respectively. Its speed and behavior are influenced by the medium's properties, its state, solid, liquid, gas, temperature, and density, and it interacts with the environment through reflection, absorption, refraction, and diffraction. Understanding these principles is absolutely crucial, not just for physicists, but for engineers, architects, musicians, and even doctors. One, what is the main purpose of the lecture? Two, according to the professor, what distinguishes a mechanical wave from an electromagnetic wave? Three, which of the following is an example of a longitudinal wave as described by the professor? Four, 
what does the professor imply about the speed of sound in extremely cold environments? Five, why does the professor mention hearing a train by putting your ear to the tracks? Six, according to the lecture, which two characteristics of sound waves primarily determine the pitch and loudness of what we hear? 